Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I'm in the studio today with just kind of a fun little share. I did a post, um, not a video, but just a post a few days ago of a bundle, kind of a surprise bundle from Barbara Mays. She's been a collector for like 45 years and is kind of de-stashing all her stuff, all her goodies. And so she was putting together kind of customized bundles. You just tell her an amount that you want to spend and what kind of items you're interested in. And then she puts a surprise bundle together for you. So I kind of, I don't, I'm not going to call it a mistake because you can never have too much fun stuff. But um, when I gave her my list, I gave her kind of just all the stuff I was interested in, not really paying attention to what I already had. So I, I don't always go through my things like that. Um, over the years, I've done a lot of different sort of crafts and make kind of things, but I'm new um, only in the last couple of years to uh, the whole book arts thing. So you kind of forget maybe materials that you had that work with that uh, because I don't look at, them, look at them all the time. For example, buttons. If I, I have a bunch of buttons, I don't go through them all the time, but I should have um, because I had her send me a little thing of buttons and buckles. Um, vintage things. So they're great and there's some good things in here and I'm going to um, kind of blend them in with my ones that I already had. Um, so I thought I would do um, video since I, I did um, kind of an unpacking video, but I was really tired that night. I had just come home from being gone for 10 days or so and it had been a long drive and so I was kind of sleepy when I made it, but I wanted to open that package. So I'm not going to share the video, but instead I'm going to share how I'm organizing and kind of show you the things that I, I got from her. In the post, you'll see just photos of kind of everything in a mess um, after I had taken it out of the bag. So today I wanted to share um, just kind of some little tips just to show you how I organize things in case um, you want to get a little bit more organized in your workshop. So this is the thing of buttons that I'm going to be um, incorporating into my stuff. And how I normally store my buttons, I don't have room in this video to show you the whole cabinet, but I have this really cute um, little cabinet. I think I got it from Lowy when I was at Reminisce, um, if I remember correctly. It was just a cute little cabinet. It's got, um, I think, eight drawers. So there's four on the top and four on the bottom of these small drawers. And they're great because then I can um, just kind of sort them in groups by color. So, you know, all the dark black ones here. I've got all the metal ones here. I have one that just has tortoise shell and then like um, shell beads or shell uh, buttons um, and then kind of just whimsical ones, uh, leather and natural material ones, horn, you know, and wood buttons, that sort of thing. So I just kind of sort them out that way. And then when I actually want to dig through them, I can just dump them on a tray and just kind of dig through them and see what I have. I keep this little vintage tray handy that I have. It's got some uh, magnets that I made out of um, just old earrings and things, which actually those would be cute on journals too. So I just kind of dump them in a tray and then kind of dig through them. I like to have um, in my workshop a lot of vintage items and containers and that sort of thing to, to organize in, um, just so I enjoy kind of looking around my shop it's a little bit messy now, but it, it when it's cleaned up, it just does make it kind of fun for me to go look through things because it kind of combines my love of making things with my love of kind of vintage things. I've always been really hooked on anything with little drawers and that sort of thing. So I also have this little cabinet. I wish I could fit it in there. This is a, it's kind of like tramp art. So it's, it has four drawers. It's like a child size toy little dresser kind of thing and it's it's really old it's considered tramp art if I can get this one drawer out I'll show you uh, because it's made out of like recycled items so this one was made out of old wooden um, cigar boxes but you wouldn't even know that's what, what they were it's not like they left them the same shape or anything they just used the wood from it to make the drawers so each one of them, though, on the side, you can kind of see what it came from. So I use this little cabinet. It sits up on a shelf, and it just has some of my clock gears and that sort of thing. Um, Barbara did send me a couple of um, watch uh, watch faces um, to add to my collection, which I already had a few. And all of these kind of things, I scan 
and remove the background so you can use them in um, digital collage and that sort of thing. And I do have them in some of my um, in some of my kits that I make that you can just cut out, fussy cut out, and use for things. So I keep a little drawer of those kind of parts. And then, um, actually, just newer watches. Some of them are old too. She sent me some little watch cases. Some of these I got from a friend whose mother had a bunch of watches, and um, so I got all of all of her little leftover parts that I can use for for jewelry and any kind of making things. And then this one, I did also get some keys from Barbara. So I already had all these drawers kind of organized. So I just added, um, you know, I, I had all these keys came from her um, little skeleton keys that I can use. And not realizing that I already had as many as I did, I for totally forgot that I had these old rusty ones. Um, I have a whole thing of just rusted ones. And then these, I don't know if anybody would be interested in any of these. I use these in my jewelry. These don't have the resin on them like I do for jewelry, but I've already um, used a chemical on, and have a patina on them. These are all just old, you know, regular household keys, you know, that you just always end up with extra ones and, you know, ones that don't go to anything anymore. So I have a bunch of these that are already kind of have a patina on them. So if anybody would be interested in, you know, buying a few of these, I can make up little packets um, of just kind of some various keys and put them in my Etsy shop. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you're interested in anything like that. And then that's just some for tagging my neck warmers. So that is just a fun little cabinet that I keep on a shelf. Okay, now that was just to show you the keys, the clock face and watch parts that maybe I got. And I did get some little tiny watch gears and that um, smaller pieces, but I've already put those in with my jewelry stuff. The other thing that I got a lot of from Barbara was um, vintage laces and trims. So I have already organized this, just so you see how much I got in my package. This entire drawer plus some um, came from Barbara's package. I also had these two, another piece that I want to show you um, how I kind of process it. And then this was a little drawer that I already had of my own things. That's all, this is all I had in this kind of trim thing. Oh, I have one whole other drawer that's this color, that's um, lace ones. But all of that other drawer and this entire bundle that I, I haven't, you know, put away yet all came from that, my bundle from Barbara. So it was chock full of stuff. And with so many, so many different ones, I thought I need to store them in my sewing machine drawers like I do. I have quite a few um, of these vintage drawers that I use for different things, just set them on a shelf. Um, I ha happen to have a bookcase that has, the center section has some nice deep shelves. So this will actually, uh, one of these drawers will actually fit in the shelf. And then I actually have one uh, set of two drawers, you know, in a sew old sewing machines, there were two drawers that hang on one side, usually sometimes both sides. And then people have removed those from the, the sewing machine um, treadle part and they just sell those. And so I have a set that was gifted to me from my best friend, um, Jeannie that passed this last year. She had given me a lot of the stuff in my room are nice memories from her, but she had given me a set of two of these in their holder still. So that's what I keep my um, vintage lace and things in. So I needed to find another drawer. I already had this one that I was just actually hauling back and forth to Studio B that I kept my, my earrings and buttons in that are in my website because I need to uh, carry my inventory with me in case anyone orders anything when I'm away. So I thought, well, I'm gonna, I don't need them in that to haul back and forth. I can put them in anything. So this fits on my shelf. So I grabbed this instead and I needed to make, um, when I first started doing this, I just had the lace and things just shoved in here or kind of wrapped just on a little piece of square or rectangular cardstock that I have. But it was always kind of flimsy and not the best thing. And I thought, you know, it'd be really cute if I had a spool, an actual spool to put it on so it didn't slide off and it was a little sturdier and that kind of thing. So what I wanted to share today is I have actually um, designed an SVG file for Cricut um, that is a spool shape that's just plain. 
I looked on Cricut to see if there were any other um, spool shapes already there that would work to fit my drawer or that there was a style that I liked and I didn't really find anything so I decided to make my own. So I've made my size to fit a standard um, sewing machine drawer if that's the way you store them but the nice thing about Cricut is if you have a Cricut maker or Cricut machine I don't know how the other machines work but you you end up with your uh, design on a grid like this on your computer and you can adjust the size um, you you unlock it and then you can kind of distort it you can make it wider but not taller or you know in both directions whatever you need to do to size it to fit the container you need it to be in so for for my drawers I ended up making them they're about three and a quarter inches total width and then they are th uh, three and three quarters height and then that way they'll fit on the side and when you wrap your lace or trim you see it from this end I also have a little cabinet um, that I can't show because it's too big to fit in my frame but it is like um, and it's a vintage piece and it's like a, a stair step kind of like um, stadium seating but for um, little pa little these fit in there so it's got these little sections across and then staggered up and they're all kind of angled um, I don't know what was normally displayed in there maybe some note cards or I don't know because they're this size I used it to um, package my earrings and then have them so you can kind of see them all but I don't really have people come to my studio anymore like I did to, to shop for jewelry. Since I'm taking it back and forth all the time, I kind of just leave it packed away. So I have that cabinet too, and I thought, well, I can, I can use these spools and maybe make them button cards, or you know, if I end up with more trims, hopefully I'll use it and I won't need that much space. But um, for right now, I have been able to fit everything pretty much in the, the three drawers that I have. Um, making these spools. So I wanted to show you how I made them and then I'm going to hopefully by the time this video is up there will be a link where you can go and get this file, this SVG file, in case you have a Cricut machine and you want to cut them out yourself. Um, you can always print them out and just um, fussy cut them out too. It would take a lot longer than a Cricut but I did mine using um, recycled cereal boxes and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you I'll put these away here and I'm going to show you how I put those together. So if you have a Cricut, um, for the cereal boxes, I used the um, the heavy duty grip, the purple one, because I I, I'm not, you know, totally used to my Cricut and what materials go on what, but it's a heavier material, so I figure it needed a strong grip. So I put it on the strong grip mat. So you can take any um, cereal boxes, cracker boxes, whatever, and they're all gonna be different sizes. So when I first did my Cricut design, um, I'll actually pull this one out. This is a print and cut, I'll show you here in a second. But I actually had them laid out where if you had 12 by 12, you could fit three and three. I don't think you could fit three, but you can maybe turn a couple the other way. If you're gonna use um, 12 by 12 uh, cardstock or um, scrapbooking papers or anything like that to make these, then you can put more of them on and they'll cut more at a time. But for me, I was using recycled boxes, so they're all different sizes. So for some of them, I could cut all the, the small parts off, um, knowing that I need at least three and three quarters by three and a quarter you know, to, to cut one. So for example, this box would cut two this way. So what I did is I just take this over to my guillotine, open it up, cut all the flaps off, um, and just cut away so that I have this biggest piece that's available to me. And then I could stick it, I know this is the standard grip mat, but say it looks like this, I could stick that little section and, you know, get it stuck down really well and then on my screen, on my computer, I would just have two of my bobbins. And then it would print, it would cut out just both of those. So that was just um, with my SVG and a basic cut. So it would cut out, that one piece would have cut out, let me get it here. These two pieces would have fit like that. 
Now, if you adjust your size, you know, obviously it's, you know, you have to know that you have enough cardboard um, to fit the size of your bobbin. And they could be staggered however you need to, you know, fit them on there. Um, but mine, mine fit okay like that. So I would just, I'd get two out of that piece and two out of that piece. And then I can save these flaps for um, punching out buttons or something like that. So I made a whole bunch of these out of, this one's out of a toast, frozen toast box. So you, you can cut out as many as you want. I even had some um, out of this, this is a little bit thinner um, and I they were just much smaller pieces. So for those, I would just have one in my on my screen and just print one and then just flip that over and print uh, or cut a second one. So I just, I it made me um, go through all of the scrap cardboard that I've been holding around. I even had this was like um, a mailer just a plain mailer. And I wanted to show you what happens when you cut these out, uh, you end up with these pieces, but then you also have this nice little negative space here. And I ended up cutting those away. And now I have all these pieces that look like little book plates to me. So that those would be nice to, you know, cover in another paper or um, decorate however you want and then put them on, you know, it's just like a little, uh, a little book plate on your on your journals on the front or on the side. So um, I saved all of these too. So now I have a, a whole bunch of these that are just, you know, these are just single layers still. So I'll save those for nice little thicker labels for things. And then all I did was I just take these two pieces that I have and glue them together, the print side together, so that I have just a nice little plain cardboard thing. And to do mine, I just went around the edges with my, oops, my top came off, with my art glitter glue. I probably need to clean that out. Every once in a while, if you have this art glitter, if you haven't used it in a day or two, um, it might get clogged. And then I just take the top off and run it through warm water. Let's, let's see. Yep, there it goes. So you just go around the edges. You don't have to get all the way to the edge because it's going to kind of slide around and then it'll it'll be fine. I don't even rough this up because I figure, you know, sometimes depending on the um, shininess of your print side, uh, it, they won't stick together like with Mod Podge. They might not stick really well. This is... It seems so far I haven't had any problem. I haven't roughed any of them up. But I just glue those down. And if you kind of slide it around, it'll get it all the way to the edge. And then just the nice thing about Cricut is they're all going to be cut exactly the same. And then you have your little spool. So I made a whole bunch of these and you know I thought afterwards I thought you know if, if you're not using recycled material or even if you are it might be fun to have a print pattern on this like say you're you're someone who's selling some trim and so you want it to have it a little bit cuter of a display card or maybe you want to print your website or something on it to punch a hole so that it hangs on a thing so you could maybe add a hole um, so that the Cricut cuts it out you know, and then you have like a hanging thing. Um, so you could do that. Or even just a hanging tag for your journals. You could make this a lot smaller and put a little hole, add a little hole. You could have the Cricut cut out your hole, or you could just use a hole punch um, and punch it out later, which I might do that for some things. The other idea that I had, and I, because I'm just learning all this graphic design stuff, is I thought it would be fun to maybe do a print and cut and then you can print a pattern, um, maybe not necessarily on the cardboard because you can't uh, run that through your printer, but you could maybe glue another piece on top of this to give it, you know, a, a design on each side. For my own purposes of storing my own things, I'm not going to spend that much time, but I just wanted to show. I took a piece of um, uh, a scan of antique paper just so it would have that kind of vintage look on it. But you could do any kind of pattern or anything that you want and then just print it out as a print and cut. Um, and then I haven't cut this out yet, so it's just gone through my my printer. And now I have it stuck to standard grip because I'm just using 
um, some plain cardstock, uh, I think 110 pound cardstock. And let me see if my Cricut is ready and I could maybe cut this out. Okay, so I have now cut that out. And now I have, let's see this is easier. I have my little patterned pieces. So I just did this one, a simple one, um, just for fun to try something out, to put that on that shape. And then I could glue that, you know, glue one of these to each side. And now I have a nice sturdy um, spool with a cute pattern on it. So that is how I made my spools. Now I will try to have, by the time this video is ready, the SVG. Uh, so I'm gonna see how many different ways I could maybe make this available to you um, in different forms so that if you don't have a machine or if you do have a machine. So um, that's my spool. And um, I do wanna share also um, what I've used to um, pin these once I've wrapped them. These are just little uh, corsage boutonniere pins that you can get from a florist supply. Um, they sell them on Amazon. You can get the little different ones. Some of them are like a little pearl that are cute too. I just like them because they're bigger, they're easier to grab, find, and um, they're nice and sturdy and longer. So I like to use those. Um, you could also use, you know, just like a T pin, um, that kind of pin too. Or even they do florist pins that are just kind of a U shape, you know, if you don't want the bulk of them. But I kind of think these look cute. The other thing that I wanted to share is what to do with ruffled lace. I'm not going to really use, I can't, I can't imagine anyway that myself using ruffled lace on anything. I mean, you might. If you do, then you could store it the same way ruffled, but I'm probably not going to ever use it that way. So I want to make it not ruffled lace. So if you've never tried to take things apart, I'm just kind of that way. I like to deconstruct things to see how they're put together. So if you want to have this just be a flat piece, then you just want to take off this little edge. Um, if you look at it, it's just been sewn so that it to, to ruffle it. So you find which end, um, you kind of look, look for the end and you'll see maybe where a thread is. And sometimes you get lucky and that'll pull out right away if you're pulling it from the correct side. But sometimes you grab it and you're pulling and it doesn't want to go. You need to be doing it from the other side and sometimes from the other end is easier. So I've started it at the other end, but I was gonna see if I could get it going here. And sometimes a little scissors or something to kind of clip it till you can get it started. It should be easy, so I'm gonna to go to the other end. Maybe it wants to go that direction. And I know I have it started here. So once you get it from the right side that it wants to come apart, it'll be really easy. So I have it coming from here and now I can just pull this whole thread. So my suggestion is if you're pulling it and it doesn't want to come, it, you're doing it from the wrong side. So you do it from the other end or the other side, and then that will just come right off. Now you have this cute little scrap of netting lace kind of thing that you could use to tie, you know, at the end of your little tag or something like that. So save that too. But now I have just a nice flat piece of lace to put on my bobbin. So that made that much easier. So let's see my, my little guy. And this is a little bit wider than that one, but that's okay. And I just wind it on there. And each of her pieces, um, most of them were at least a yard long, if not more. And then I did have some scraps, some small scraps too, because I told her I don't mind little bits and pieces. So then you just have that and you put your little pin in it and add it to my drawer. So that is my um, my lace. Uh, the other way that I store buttons, I didn't even realize I had this. This is how bad I am. Um, it was high and it's from back when I had uh, stuff in a consignment place. So I didn't even realize I had all these buttons. Um, I had put them away. So I had carded them up at one time by 
uh, kind of by color, even if they were different ones, and then put them on a piece of cardstock that kind of looked cute because I was selling these in a shop. So I have a ton of these. I just kind of need to go through what I have, maybe get rid of some. These are really cute. Uh, maybe get rid of some. See, these were $24. These these were really old, and they're... Um, they're like a, more like a tie clip kind of thing. Anyway, this is just another way to store them. I just used a little bit of hot glue and um, so that they would stick because then they just peel right off of that paper. So that's kind of another way that I had done them because then you can kind of just, you know, flip through them and see what you have because they're kind of displayed nice, you know. I can just see what I have. I just need to start using lots of buttons for things, I think. So um, there you go. So that's just some ideas of ways to store some of the little goodies that you have. Um, but I guess the key is to remember to look through them from time to time so that you can actually use them in your journals. So I'm next going to grab this one. My desk is such a mess. But um, I have been asked to work on this book again. And she's asked me a couple of times and I keep saying yes, yes. So this week I'm definitely working on it. This is my Use Your Wings journal. If you haven't been following me, um, it is a cover. I was asked to do a demo on one of my hand painted covers of an altered book. And so I did that and then I liked it so much I decided to finish the insides too. So I'm about, I'm close to halfway. This is going to be a folded heart in the center. And um, it's, it, I ended up making it all, all things with wings and it, I haven't looked at it in such a long time, but it's got lots of fun moving parts and, and different things. Each, each kind of spread, I will call this has lots of pockets and cards and things, and they all have a, their own theme. So this one was a bird and this one was dragonflies. And then this one was kind of, uh, my mountain, just kind of my mountain theme. Um, with the eagle. That was the bird for this one. There's an eagle here somewhere. Here it is. I haven't looked at this in such a long time. It'll be fun to kind of go through it again. I've totally forgotten. I'll put a link down below in case you want to kind of catch up where I am on this before I get my next video out. Um, this one was, I was doing this one in October and it's um, all about bats. And this is one of my favorite pieces, I think, was how this turned out. This was all with little scraps of my hand-painted papers. So I I know that I had finished off. I needed to do these cards. So I had done this, which I don't think I've shared this at all yet. Um, and I've started a card that's going to go in here. So I need to finish these up. I think that will be my next video. And then i am already started thinking about what's going to go here. Uh, I wasn't sure I was going to do anything on this page at first. I thought maybe I would just jump over to here. Um, and leave those two facing my heart blank. But I have an idea. I think I want to do an owl. And so maybe I just do one page here that maybe has some flips that is an owl. And that will be my thing I work on. And then I'll be starting this, the, the back half. So um, I'm going to work on this this week, I promise, and get a video out. And then I'm going to jump back, I think, to the Vintage Grunge Journal and work on my booty. So um, that's it for me today. I will... Uh, get to work here. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.